I described to you kind of some of the, 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 the rituals and pageants and so forth that um, the Nazis used to kind of unify uh, the people to have a sense of uh, belonging to something greater than the individual uh, parts of society. Um, as one uh, historian wrote, he said um, that, quote, the regime's immense thrust stemmed from its capacity to make increasing numbers of Germans regard themselves as anonymous combatants with leave passes revocable at a moment's notice, rather than individuals rooted in their civilian existence. End of quote. Um, in other words, it's 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 as if all of German society is being um, militarized to one extent or or another. Um, we could probably start off by looking at um, what happened to the the trade unions, labor unions in um, Nazi Germany. You remember that um, as of May 1st, 1933, um, Hitler banned uh, all the major trade unions. Uh, this is something that he had promised to do. Um, it's not just in Germany, but of course, globally, trade unions um, had always been regarded with suspicion. Uh, this was not something that certainly corporate capital was interested in seeing develop. And, and, and so, you know, throughout the world, not just in uh, Germany, there, there was this resistance to trade unionism, fear, suspicion, um, and, and, and certainly uh, trade unionism was, um, after the Russian Revolution, often associated with Bolshevism, communism, revolutionary ac activities. Um, what the Nazis do is upon banning the trade unions, um, they now roll up all workers into the Deutsche Arbeitsfront, uh, the German uh, labor front. This becomes a Nazi organization that essentially uh, pretends to be representing workers' rights. Um, it has its own uh, flag and symbology. It's a uh, again one of those uh, semi-state, semi-private organizations. Uh, but essentially, it, as I say, takes the claim to represent workers. Uh, the Deutsche Arbeitsfront, of course, presents this 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 kind of image of we're all united together for the benefit of uh, Germany, no more, um, you know, worker management conflict because we're all uh, kameraden, we're all, uh, you know, comrades here. Uh, so, so that's essentially uh, the message. So uh, from May 1933 onwards, if, you know, you have a safety issue or pay issue or any kind of issue with your employer, um, the German labor front is where you have to go to seek redress. And of course, it's not particularly uh, forth, forthcoming. So this, of course, as I say, makes all the right wing elements and corporate elements particularly um, happy in, in Germany and, and the middle classes as well that are concerned about strikes and labor activism. Um, you know, essentially the Nazis feed on that kind of old standing fear. Every German uh, has to carry an Arbeitsbuch, uh, a labor book. This is um, like a passport and uh, you have to carry it with your driver's license, your identity card, and in it, um, your employment record and what sector you're employed in is very meticulously and carefully entered. Um, here you can see uh, the, the stamp on the right, the Arbeitsamt 
There you go, that term amt again. This is uh, the labor department, uh, number 386 in Vienna. Uh, this is an Arbeid's book, obviously, from uh, the period where uh, Germany has occupied Austria. We still haven't um, gotten there. We'll get there today. Um, so, you know, if, if you're stopped by the police, uh, one of the things they'll inspect is your 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 workbook, and if it turns out that you're unemployed or there are big gaps in in your employment record in your book, that's what can get you that black triangle in the concentration camp. Um, you know when they say that as socials are uh, quote labor shy individuals, uh, that's how they know whether you're working or not. Um, how I suspect it worked, it wasn't that they would randomly search out people who may have, um, you know, a record of unemployment in their in their labor book. It's if you catch their attention while doing something else um, that they then pull your labor book and and oh aha you're um, you know you're habitually unemployed and so off you go. Uh, to a labor camp where labor makes you free, uh, as the Nazis like to remind um, all the inmates. So um, this is, you know, yet another method of, and you know, we'll look further on as well into the kind of identification and registration um, German citizens will be required to do. But this is just another um, aspect of beginning to control the movement of the population. It's um, everyone's location and, and, and what they do day in and day out. Um, uh, you know, it's mind boggling if, if you can imagine Nazis with the internet. Um, it, it, it would have been a whole other world. Um, along with the labor front, there's also the Reichsarbeitsdienst, uh, the Reich's labor service. Uh, those who are unemployed are required, compulsory, to serve in the labor service. Um, those between the ages of 18 and and I think it was 26 or 24 as well are required to do a compulsory tour of duty with the labor uh, service. Um, when you graduate high school, you're not admitted to university until you've done service with the labor corps. Uh, that's their banner. And essentially, this is a militarized um, kind of labor corps. Uh, you know, they, they're, they're put to work, essentially building canals, building the Autobahn, working uh, on farms. The point of the labor service, essentially Hitler's idea, is that anybody who graduates high school before they're admitted to university should do, you know, minimum six months labor uh, so that they become familiar with manual labor. He wanted to, um, he wanted the educated middle classes to have a kind of um, greater sympathy with the life of a, um, a common laborer, a manual laborer. And, and what often the effect was is because of typically this kind of hazing in every kind of organization and, and because, um, you know, old school manual laborers often were supervisors of these snotty nosed uh, college kids right uh, doing their labor service rather than kind of giving a sense of sympathy amongst um, educated middle classes for working class a lot of them after service in in, in, in the hazing in the labor corps actually end up uh, with a hostility so it, it, it didn't exactly work but what it does do is of course it militarizes young a man and women as well uh, will do uh, uh, labor service as well once um, the war begins, uh, usually kind of agricultural work. Uh, 
but what it does, of course, is it militarizes, uh, first of all, males before they go into the army, which also compulsory service in, in the army. I believe it was 18 months in, in, in peacetime. So you kind of go from, you know, the Nazi Cub Scouts to the Hitler Youth to um, the labor corps and and then the military and then presumably uh part of the nazi party or some nazi organization like the waffen ss or the national socialist motor corps and and, and so forth so people's lives they say um are are very regimented especially when 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 they're young it also allows for hitler to make these outrageous claims of having solved unemployment uh, as the unemployment numbers drop. Now, the only reason they're, they're, they're dropped is because the unemployed are essentially conscripted into the labor corps, um, into the labor service, and, and, and end up being taken off the unemployment uh, books. There you can see women um, as well at, 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 at work. Another organization, um, the NSV. Um, the NSV is the National Socialist um, Welfacht uh, organization, Welfacht, uh, welfare. Um, Hitler, of course, remember, hated the Enlightenment and, and the idea that um, the weak need to be protected in society. Hitler's position was that um, the strong need to be protected from uh, the weak. The weak are like drowning people pulling down those who are trying to save them with them to their own drowning deaths. And, and, and so welfare in Nazi Germany will become reserved for the strong. Um, the NSV was the Nazi party's private welfare organization. It uh, was funded by party members, by donations. It was intended to, um, if an SA man, for example, a brown shirt stormtrooper is uh, um, injured in a, in, in, in a street fight and so forth or killed it's intended to take care of him or um, his 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 orphaned family if, 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 if that's the case but once the Nazis um, take power uh, the NSV then is rolled up into the state and it becomes this mega welfare um, agency that again essentially focuses on uh, supporting the racially pure and the strongest as opposed to the weakest in uh, German uh, society. Um, this is their logo and um, it becomes ubiquitous in many forms throughout uh, Germany. For example, uh, kindergartens or, or um, you know, daycare centers are run by the NSV. Um, here's a, a kind of help center for Mutter und Kind, uh, for um, mothers and, and children. Um, you'll see welfare activities such as um, this one here, a communal kitchen. Um, welfare organizes communal kitchens in every neighborhood of Germany uh, at least once a week. And what they discover is, is um, if people pool all their um, uh, kind of leftovers together, there is a... a kind of surplus of, of, of food begins to emerge. It's actually, a, a, I, I think, a great idea. It's a, one, uh, at least one positive uh, lesson we can take from 
from the Nazis, uh, this 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 type of um, neighborhood food distribution, this kind of activism and 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 uh, drive to eliminate the waste of of food. So, um, as I say, once a week Germans pool whatever leftovers um, they have, and and it's kind of cooked in this communal kitchen, and everybody eats together, and and it does uh, kind of turn waste into into a surplus and this is in the cities uh, you can see the same thing occurring um in 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 the countryside pooling of firewood for example for those who were still heating their homes um in 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 you know by by, by wood and so forth um nsv help stations were located everywhere. This is the NSV Bahnhofdienst, the railroad service. Uh, so, for example, every railway station would, would would have, you know, if you needed help of any kind or you were a stranded traveler and so forth. Kind of the way the Red Cross um, offers as 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 well, or or used to offer. I don't know if they still do that, but I know Red Cross used to have travelers' aid offices um, same thing uh, here the funding uh, comes from Germans themselves um, everywhere there are rally rallies uh, with volunteers uh, shaking these coin collection tins in people's faces trying to collect money for uh, welfare. Uh, people's payroll is often, uh, there's a deduction made every time you get paid and, and there's a little notation that if you don't want to, uh, you know, this to be deducted from your welfare deductions from your paycheck, go see your block lighter um, and explain to them why you don't want to help uh, the Volksgemeinschaft. So, so it's a, it, there's a kind of extortionary element to this. Um, you buy, for example, a uh, bus ticket and the conductor, instead of giving you the change, thanks you for a donation that you've you've given to the people's welfare um, assessment here's that general I showed you uh, show up at your door collecting uh, for for welfare this is Sepp Dietrich I remember that the, the, the commander of the Leibstandard um, kids at school are required to sell welfare uh, tickets uh, for you know for donations, and those kids that sell the least amount of tickets, their name gets put up on the blackboard as opposed to the kids that sell the most, and 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 so you know no parent wants their kids to be. Um, you know, identified that way, and 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 so parents often will buy up their their kids' tickets to make sure their name doesn't go up uh, uh, on the blackboard. So uh, this is a way for first of all for a couple of things. It, it's a way for Hitler to finance the social services without um, kind of um, bearing it in, in taxation. It uh, makes the entire welfare system self-sustaining through these kinds of extortionary uh, donations. It also begins to take people's surplus savings away from them. Um, this is partly because um, Hitler can now spend some of the money that the state would spend on social services instead on militarizing industry, on new weapons, rebuilding the Navy, rebuilding the tank corps, rebuilding the um, Air Force. Um, and it also takes surplus money out of the economy. Uh, so people um, as as their money is taken away for welfare uh, don't have that extra money to spend 
on say a radio or or a luxury item and 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 of course that encourages german industry not to focus on the production of consumer goods because nobody can afford to buy consumer goods at the, at, at this point and 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 so german industry essentially begins to align itself towards government contracts to produce military uh, weapons. So, um, you know, there's multiple facets to this welfare strategy, as I say, from uh, making an autonomous welfare uh, system to, as I say, uh, militarizing the economy and, and as well as taking surplus money out of the economy from the consumer market towards um, the military uh, military production market. Uh, magazines, of course, media in Germany, I don't need to uh say everyone can figure it out it it immediately takes on um uh, the kind of racial ideology of the nazi state um essentially promoting a a, a racial view of history and the world and and and, and of course, the portrayal of uh, uh, Jews in popular uh, media. Uh, Jews are often presented as um, kind of Orthodox Eastern European Jews, which often is, remember Hitler commenting about, you know, when he was a young man seeing an Orthodox Jew in, 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 in Vienna. Um, a lot of Germans, um, you know, live among assimilated uh, Jews that aren't obviously Jewish. Uh, in many cases, you can't physically uh, um, distinguish a, a uh, Jew from a non-Jew in, in Germany. In Eastern Europe, because of the unique um, a theology of orthodoxy and, and, and kind of um, the accompanying uh, clothing and garments that uh, Jews wear, uh, they are physically identifiable. And, and, and so uh, these kinds of alien Jews are presented as, as um, the threat. And, and of course, Germans are not encountering them to any great extent until the war begins. And, and, and so as Germany begins invading Poland and moves eastwards, um, when they, of course, when Nazi Germany takes Austria in 1938, suddenly um, these targeted Jews be, uh, are, are physically now coming into contact with, with, with Germans for the first time. But essentially the press portrays um, Jews as these orthodox individuals in this kind of way. Hitler, um, of course, puts a lot of stress on youth. Um, the slogan in Nazi Germany for uh, young people is the future belongs to us. Um, Hitler, of course, claims that everything he's doing, he's doing for future generations and that children are the future um, generation. And, and so um, kids began, begin getting uh, Nazified from very early age, essentially. Uh, as soon as they can walk, they're squeezed into little uniforms and um, into various organizations. Um, there is, of course, beginning kind of in, in, in various uh, age levels, you have um, the Deutsche Jungvolk, uh, the German Young Folk, uh, the Cub Scouts for boys between the age of 10 and 14. And then uh, once they become 15, they uh, join the Hitler Jugend, the Hitler Youth, for again, boys between the ages of 15 and 18. 
Um, and there they are uh, militarized. They uh, get the experience of what it's like uh, to live in a, in a barracks. They're taught to shoot. Um, they're taught to drill, camp, move, march. Um, they're giving instructions um, into emergency uh, services. So they're often used as auxiliaries, especially once the bombing begins. Uh, the Hitler youth, of course, are brought out to help clean up, put out fires. Um, they become, as they say, a, a, a pre-military, militarized paramilitary. Um, and, and as soon as they graduate, the Hitler Youth at 18, off they go to the labor court. Uh, and once they finish with the labor court, off they go into the military. And once they leave the military, of course, they remain on reserve. Um, and and um, the hope by Hitler is, is they'll join some political um, organization. As um, Hitler will himself write, He'll say, he'll say this in 1938, he says, these young people learn nothing else but to think as Germans and to act as Germans. These boys join our organization at the age of 10 and they get a breath of fresh air for the first time, even if I guess they're wearing gas masks. Um, and then four years later, they move from the Jungfolk to the Hitler Youth, and here we keep them for another four years. And then we are even less prepared to give them back into the hands of those who create our class and status barriers. Rather, we take them immediately into the party, into the labor front, into the SA or into the SS, into the motor corps and so on. And if they are there for 18 months or two years and have still not become real national socialists, then they go into the labor service and are polished there for six or seven months. And all of this under a single symbol, the German spade. And if after six or seven months, there are still remnants of class consciousness or pride in status, then the Wehrmacht, the army, will take over the further treatment for two years. And when they return after two years or four years, then to prevent them from slipping back into the old habits, once again, we take them immediately into the SA, SS, and so on, and they will not be free again for the rest of their lives." End of quote. So that's essentially the plan. Uh, little drummer boys being produced into the future uh, Waffen-SS soldiers that every Hitler youth boy aspires to, to, to become. Hitler um, as well is, uh, introduces uh, racial education into the school as Hitler will say, no boy or girl shall leave school without having been fully instructed in the need for and nature of racial purity. This will create the prerequisite for the racial foundations of our nationhood and in turn provide a secure grounding for later cultural development. Uh, two books are notorious, two textbooks produced by Stryker, distributed ubiquitously through the German schooling system. Um, for uh, smaller, younger kids, kind of in primary school, there's a book called The Jew is a Fox. And for older kids, um, The Jew is a Poison Mushroom. And um, the books kind of fe feature these illustrations um, of, uh, again, these stereotypical images of, of Jews uh, engaged in, uh, you know, child molestation. Uh, they're portrayed as pimps recruiting uh, German women arriving at the train station from the countryside. Uh, doctors who molest their Aryan um, uh, patients. 
uh, they're seen as uh, kind of performing these cruel uh, kosher ritual, kosher slaughter of, of animals, that they're cruel to animals. Some of those um, animal rights laws that I had uh, described to you in the first lecture, some of them are a direct um, attack on uh, kind of ritual slaughter that, that some religions practice. Uh, kids, of course, in school are educated in, in this kind of kooky racial science that, you know, you can recognize a, a, a Jew by the shape of their nose and or by the shape of their ears and, and, and so forth. Um, and of course, Stryker everywhere is uh, kind of promoted as this guiding light of German kids, and 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 so we begin to see um, uh, this kind of other portrayal of of of, of the Jews as kind of unhealthy, dark, swarthy, chubby, uh, cigar smoking uh, financiers and bankers and stock manipulators, uh, while um, uh, you know the, the bare chested German worker has these classical Greek uh, features. So um, again, in 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 the children's perception, uh, what a Jew and what a German are supposed to look like um, is, is being infused in at least one generation of, of, of Germans educated under the Nazi regime. Again, Jews are portrayed as kind of these cruel landlords and 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 exploiters of, of, of young German uh, women and girls. And we'll see all this will as, as well manifest itself in the series of racial laws that will prohibit Jews, for example, from having Aryan uh, or non-Jewish patients. It'll, uh, uh, laws will uh, prohibit uh, young German women under the age of 45 from being employed in a German um, household, in a sorry, Jewish household and, and, and so forth. You're seen again as corruptors of, of, of young German uh, women. And the textbooks kind of prevision the expulsion of Jews from the schooling system as both teachers um, um, in the way as um, the, the law for the establishment of a professional civil service did um, and eventually there'll be a law to prevent overcrowding in schools that will expel uh, Jewish school children and university students as well. That'll be forthcoming. I'll, as I say, I'll do a separate lecture uh, just on the racial laws and that whole issue next week. So all this is uh, preparing kids about eight years before, as I say, uh, Jews in Germany will not be expelled into ghettos out of Germany um, until October um, of 1941. So uh, there's a good eight years of kids being brought up um, with these textbook images of a future expulsion that they'll actually witness and see. And, and, and of course, um, what they see in their textbook, of course, will, will set them up uh, to accept what they see in reality. Jews not welcome here. Uh, women, uh, same thing as for young um, boys. There is a league of young girls. Uh, the Jugendmadelbund. Uh, this is for young girls between the ages of 10 and 14. Uh, so they start very young. They're, they're, they're taught how um, to give the, the people salute and how to keep the hem of their dress straight and, and salute Nazis smartly. Uh, and then once they reach the age of 15, 
they then join the Bund of Deutsche Model, the League of German Girls. Um, and there, essentially, girls um, are taught how to uh, cook and uh, take care of children and, and babies, uh, how to stay healthy, to be of um, you know, in child uh, bearing health. And, and, and so essentially um, the path for women, the majority of women, there, there will be of course exclusions, but the majority of, of women, uh, the path that's identified for them is of course motherhood and, and being a, a, a good housewife. Uh, all that uh, and a good wife uh, in general, all that is essentially the state is beginning to drive toward that. The birth rate is a huge concern for, for the Nazis. It's been steadily dropping since the First World War. Um, the Nazis will attempt to raise the birth rate and fertility rate by various means, including tax policy. Um, the more kids you have, um, the less tax you pay. Um, there, there, there is quite a robust um, daycare system and childcare system uh, for Aryan children, obviously. And um, none of that in the end has the kind of impact on the fertility rate that the Nazis hope for. Um, the Nazis will never raise the fertility rate beyond what it was in, 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 um, the, in the 1900s and 1920s immediately following the First World War. Um, they never go back to the kind of uh, imperial age of uh, Germany. So essentially, it's a, it's, it's, it, the program is is a failure. There are um, stories about the Lebens uh, born, the, the fountain of, of 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 life that Himmler organizes. Uh, stories that um, young Hitler maidens volunteer to have sex with racially pure SS officers um, and then bear a child that is given up to the state. Um, that's myth. Uh, there is no evidence at all of anything like that occurring. The Lebensborn was something that Himmler did indeed sponsor and finance. Um, it was, Himmler felt that to stigmatize single women who are producing um, racially pure children is not to the benefit of um, the, the Nazis policy of increasing the birth rate. And, and so he organizes um, the, the, the Lebensborn as a, a, a kind of healthcare system for single mothers where, um, you know, they're not stigmatized, their kids get all these uh, services, um, as long as I, as, as, as I say, um, they are of, of, of um, racially pure uh, characteristics. Here's some, um, I mentioned these magazines before, Signal. Um, Signal was a magazine published uh, by the Nazis in, in, in uh, various languages. Uh, it's, it's intended audiences were people in countries either allied with Nazi Germany or um, under German occupation. And so, um, Germany did occupy a tiny sliver of the United Kingdom, um, the Channel Islands, just off the coast of, uh, of, of um, France. And, and so, uh, you know, it's an English speaking um, island. And, and, and so in the Channel Islands, Signal was printed and distributed in English. And, and so some of those Nazi images and, and, and um, 
diagrams and posters and stuff that I've, I've, I've drawn from Signal are in the original English, the way the Nazis used it. Here, by the way, is a comment on uh, women in uh, labor. The Nazis, and particularly Hermann Goering, weren't too particularly keen on, on seeing women entering the labor market. And, and in fact, that's why um, Nazis will, once the war starts, um, start conscripting over six million slaves that they will drag to Germany um, in order that, um, unlike the allied countries, women don't end up uh, working in the factories as, as men go off to war, um, the way we certainly in North America and in England did during both the First and Second World Wars. In uh, Germany, they'll be using slave labor or volunteer uh, uh, labor, lots of people in occupied territories. Some of them, they're not part of the six million slaves. Some of them volunteered uh, to work and, and they got kind of... Um, almost like a guest worker status. They were treated better than slaves. Um, they lived among the German population. They had a, uh, a German foreigner's passport and, and, and so forth. They had some of the benefits, even though they were not German citizens, but six million were essentially treated as, as slaves and, and treated quite badly. The poster here essentially says, um, comparing how women and men perform work. Um, uh, the argument here is that when men work, they're particularly interested in um, how the gears and the mechanism, for example, a crane operator loading a ship, unloading a train and loading a ship, um, is interested in the mechanical operation of the, of the crane. But a female, Tra uh, crane operator. Um, it's about, for her, it's about helping others. Um, and so, yes, uh, women can do the same work, but how they perform it and the motives, according to the Nazis, are different. That's the headline. Twice the same thing is not the same thing. Let's see if I can enlarge that text for you. Um, while a crane operator, whether man or woman, has the same work to do, the brain process involved are quite divergent with the two sexes. Um, the man operator uh, does with his crane, he's animated by satisfaction in his method of organization and its quick and precise functioning. Uh, but um, she, uh, she, uh, the woman for her part, is filled with pleasure in helping, in looking after loads, in passing them on to others who need what she is helping to transport. So if you ever get a hand on, on, on these signal books, as I say, they have been republished. Uh, I know there's three volumes out there. It, 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 because it's in original, as I say, Nazi English, as, as, as they have published it back in the 40s, they're, they're interesting insights into um, how the Nazis kind of perceived themselves and, 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 and the world. For example, here we can see uh, Germany in the three phases of uh, passage when the British and the French and all uh, were kind of looting all of Germany's uh, assets and, and agricultural resources and the factories stood empty. Then of course the Weimar regime with all these different parties and all these people uh, kind of robbing people, looting people, lies in the newspapers. Uh, but then come the Nazis and everyone is united and the factories are all smoking, the National Socialist State. So it goes from this 
to this. To this. Um, we've all seen this. I mean, everybody is so happy. Here, when you look at this um, diagram, you can just see a lot of the things that maybe were unclear to you already are, are, are now more clear. You know, here's one of those communal chicken, communal kitchens, woman collecting or donating for welfare, the block lighter, welfare office right there, happy kids, happy Nazis everywhere, SA training, Um, there as well is um, an organization, Kraft durch Freude, Strength Through Joy. It encourages Germans to travel, to garden, um, kind of um, plant your own um, victory gardens, which uh, some of us are doing now these days. Uh, you know, grow your own uh, food so you don't strain the resources of the state. It also brings you um, happiness, travel, a, a kind of this holistic, happy consumer society that um, is not supposed to be overly materialistic. Um, the Volkswagen, the people's car is supposed to be this, this, this kind of modest, a vehicle that everybody can uh, afford, not this luxury I I item. Um, there's even the people's radio uh, that has no dial. It, 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 it's essentially, there's just a couple of buttons and, and it's uh, automatically tuned just to the state radio stations. Uh, travel as well, you know, you got to remember a lot of Germans had, uh, of course, suffered in deprivation through the 20s into the early 30s. Um, you know, Germans were double hit uh, first by the post-war economic disaster that um, neither Americans nor Canadians experienced. I mean, for us, the early 1920s were boom years. Um, while certainly for the Germans, it was the year of inflation. So Germany had this brief uh, kind of economic renaissance uh, starting from the Dawes plan around 1925 to um, 1929. So there was this four year uh, period um, and then everything went black again. So a lot of Germans never got a chance to get a college education, um, didn't get a chance to travel or, 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 or live a kind of, um, you know, I don't want to say luxurious life, but at least a kind of affluent um, life. And, and so now under Hitler, they're, they're being given all these opportunities. Um, this is something um, the Russians were doing as well. They uh, kind of built all these worker um, holiday camps and, 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 and so forth. So uh, often uh, workers in, in Russia, when they go on vacation, would all vacation together um, in a, a vacation uh, camp that was run by the factory in which they worked. Well, uh, the Nazis as well kind of take these um, uh, steps and, and organize uh, through uh, strength, through joy, these various activities, concerts, art uh, exhibits, and, 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 and so forth. Um, marriage, of course, is, is very much encouraged, as is motherhood. Um, here you can see again from Signal magazine what happens when a German girl uh, marries. Um, the first thing, of course, is she goes through is a racial check to ensure that uh, she's um, racially pure. Uh, when she marries, she will be set up by the German government with household goods, sheets, um, dishes, whatever she needs. If she's pregnant, she will get from welfare uh, help 
in uh, child care, prenatal, postnatal, um, health care, uh, instructions on how to care for um, an infant, um, all, all, you know, again, arguably very good uh, things that um, it's a shame that we don't do uh, for children what the Nazis did for their children, for our own children uh, to, the, to this day. Um, unfortunately, again, all this is um, driven by a, a race agenda. So, you know, we have to kind of pick um, these tiny little corn kernels of, of good out of uh, the pile of shit that Nazism essentially was. Uh, but, you know, they are there. Uh, and, and all sorts of ethical issues about that, in particular, the question of, of, of uh, medical experimentation. Um, there, there, you know, there were medical experiments uh, of the kind that you could never do because they required human subjects. Uh, the question now that uh, you know, remains de debated um, are the results of those experiments, can we ethically use them even if it saves lives today? And, and, and it's a question that has never really uh, been, been resolved. Yes, those experiments were horrific crimes, but what about um, the data from them um, on the assumption that the experiments were at least scientifically validly conducted? Is there um, anything we can learn from uh, the studies that the Nazis did on how long a person can drink salt water uh, or how long they can uh, sustain life in uh, sub-freezing waters or at high altitude and, and so forth. And it's a very heated uh, debate, essentially, from the swastika uh, to everything else that the Nazis touched, they essentially poisoned um, everything, which is, again, essentially the, the evil of that, that system. So here you can see kind of this, this image of um, the Volksgenossen, the members of the Volksgemeinschaft, a big family, uh, blonde, healthy, rosy-cheeked under the protective uh, eagle wings of the German state and the NSDP happy Nazis on the beach. Everything about the child is first, right down to kind of um, public architecture. Um, every German should have their own home. Uh, this again is from Signal uh, magazine. Dwellings for German workers and their families, promoting you know 74 square meters of uh, uh, working uh, living space for a family with four children, rented at less than 50 Reichsmarks a month. So again you can divide 50 by 4 if you want what the dollar purchasing value of 50 reichsmarks was uh in in the 1940s um women of course um all this is um about increasing the birth rate, women are encouraged to stay home and are awarded medals for having uh, children. As you can see, they proudly wear these, these Mutterkreuzes, mother crosses. Now, um, the way it, 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 it worked, was there were three uh, grades of uh, the mother cross. If you had eight or more kids, you were awarded the gold cross. Uh, six to seven kids gave you the silver cross. 
and uh, four kids gave you um, a, a, earned you a, a bronze uh, Mutterkreuz. Um, but um, you didn't just get that medal uh, if, if, if you had eight kids. Um, there, there were all sorts of subtextual uh, things about the medal. First of all, the medal was arbitrarily issued. Um, it was issued to families, quote, rich in children. Uh, so in other words, if you had eight kids, but you were on welfare, um, you were not eligible for the Mutterkreuz. Or if you had those eight kids by different fathers, um, or even the husband was not um, a, a, quote, respectable member of the family, if, if, if there were other issues um, you know, in, in, in the family, the marriage was in crisis or the woman was divorced or a single mother, they were not eligible for the Mutterkreuz. Uh, the Mutterkreuz was for um, essentially those who met kind of middle class family value agenda of um, the Nazi party. So I, I think that um, it's it's a really a complex subject, and I just skimmed the top for you um, in in terms of the internal organization of of uh, Nazi Germany. I also assigned you a couple of articles, giving you a few peeks into issues in it. One on selective um, resistance, and the other on what happens when. Um, wives file complaints against their husbands uh, with the Gestapo. And so you, you should definitely master those arguments as well as the Bissell argument, because um, I, I imagine it will be on the final exam. Um, 